Hi everyone! So it's a big day on Saturday, a uh, big day in my books. It is World Gin Day. So as you know I am a massive fan of gin, it's pretty much my life. Um, so what I thought I would do is I'm going to teach you how to make one of my favourite cocktails ever which is the Gin Martini. Now I think martinis sometimes seem like a bit of a scary cocktail to try and make. They're actually really, really, really basic. There is pretty much two ingredients, but actually I'm going to show you a super, super easy way to make a martini so you can impress your friends or on a Friday, Saturday night, have one at home. So the first thing to note about a martini, and one of the key things, is that it's all about the temperature. So because you're pretty much drinking straight spirits, it needs to be really, really, really cold because no one wants to drink lukewarm gin. Um, so I'm going to make a gin martini. Personally, I prefer gin to vodka. There's more flavour to it because um, when it's distilled, there are botanicals um, involved. So it's just got a bit more flavour to it. Sorry, vodka, but it's my preference. Um, and I'm going to make a dry martini. So, again, I think that's another um, sticking point for people. They don't understand what it means when you say a dry martini or a wet martini or a dirty martini. All these different phrases. Now, the dry element is using a dry vermouth. So vermouth is just a fortified wine um, that's kind of infused with herbs and spices. So it's a really flavoursome spirit. And basically, the wet or dryness depends how much you use in the martini. Basically, the smaller amount of dry vermouth you use, the drier it is, and the more vermouth you use, the wetter it is. I hope that makes sense. So, if you want something that's really dry and not sweet, you don't use much vermouth at all. And if you're, say, have a bit more of a sweet tooth, or you just fancy it, or maybe you're a bit of a martini virgin and you're just kind of easing yourself into it, then use um, use a bit more vermouth, and it just kind of softens the the alcohol a little bit. So first things first, um, you need your martini glass to be really, really cold. So I always put mine in the freezer, um, or you can put some ice uh, and some water in the glass to let it chill. Just a note on glasses, I do have martini glasses because I make a lot of cocktails and it's the industry I work in. However, I've been to many, many bars and I've had it served in a wine glass pretty much, like a tumbler, a sort of very very small um, almost sherry glass so many different types of glasses so just because you don't have the classic uh, martini glass don't think that you can't have a martini don't let that put you off so I have a cocktail maker but again another good thing about this cocktail is that you don't need one of these um, you could just as easily make it in a pint glass it's fine as long as you've got something to strain it so a sieve don't think that you need really, really fancy equipment to be able to make this cocktail. So first of all, we're going to add loads and loads of ice. So now I'm making a dry martini. I'm not going to use lots of vermouth. However, um, what you want to do is you want to basically coat the ice cubes with the vermouth because then you still get the flavour from it, so the kind of herby uh, botanicals, but without the sweetness. And just as a note, I'm using, this is a Sainsbury's dry vermouth. Um, I normally use Noily Pratt, which is sort of, possibly the bartender's go-to dry vermouth. Um, I didn't have any left and I use it for cooking. Really, really good for cooking actually if you don't have white wine, this is great. I'm gonna put about 20 ml of this dry vermouth. Now, so what you wanna do, you wanna give it a stir um, and you want the vermouth to cover all of the ice cubes. I wanna get rid of that vermouth because I want it to be dry, but you're just, as I said, covering the ice cubes just to get a little bit of flavor from it. So what you do is you just strain this off if you do like something a bit sweeter, then you basically don't need to drain this off. So now I've just got my ice cubes and they're nice and cold and they've got a covering of vermouth so they've got a nice bit of flavour to them. And now my favourite part is adding the gin. So the gin that I'm using is Little Bird Gin. So this is one of my favourite gins of all time and I think it makes a perfect dry martini because it's very much a citrusy style of gin. So it's got pink grapefruit as its main botanical. Um, so it just means that the whole uh, citrusy notes of the vermouth and the garnish all marry together really, really, really well. So then add the gin, like this. So now this is the bit where James Bond would tell you to shake your martini. Sorry James, but the best way to do a martini is to stir it. 
when you shake the gin, it actually bruises the gin. And that sounds a bit ridiculous, but it actually does change the flavour and, and ruin it. So you just want to give it some love. You want to stir it for about 30 seconds and then that's it. And now you can see it's really, really, really chilled. So then all we have to do now is strain it. I've been chilling my martini glass in the freezer, so it's really nice and cold. So you may have heard a martini being called a dirty martini or with a twist. Basically a dirty martini is when you have olives as a garnish, so you have green olives. Some people actually like to have some of the olive brine into the martini, so it gives it a bit of a sort of saline, uh, salty texture to it. I really like a dirty martini, but um, I didn't have any olives, uh, so I'm doing it with a twist. So a twist is basically a lemon garnish. I have my lemon, my peeler. Basically, you just want to do a really big bit of peel from the lemon. So then you have a little bit of lemon. So the key is um, there's loads of delicious citrus oils in the in the skin. So you want to squeeze it and make sure that they all go into the martini. So you just hold it above the drink. I don't know if you'll see it on camera, but when you do this at home, you'll actually see a little like of um, zestiness. Rub it around the rim and then place it in there. And that is a dry gin martini. It's really simple. All you need, gin, some vermouth, a glass, some ice, a lemon. That is it. Super, super easy. So why not make one of these for World Gin Day? I'm just going to double check that it tastes like it should. That was really good. The idea of drinking straight gin is a bit of a scary thought, but because you chill it so much and that little bit of vermouth and that lemonness just sort of takes away any like alcohol flavour, and it doesn't taste that alcoholic. They can be dangerous. Drink them with a little bit of care. Try not to have five in a row uh, on an empty stomach. Speaking from experience, uh, you might get in a bit of trouble. But, but yeah, I hope you all really enjoy World Gin Day and thanks for watching. As always, subscribe, like, comment. Do let me know and I'll make sure to get to you. Thank you very much. Cheers.